Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. In today's digital world, we observe that there are a number of upgradations coming in each and every field. Or we can see that every device or technology is becoming smarter and smarter. But do you know what actually is the basic or fundamental reason behind these developments in science and technology? So if we just look some decades ago, then we can observe that the technology was not at all so much developed. But in few decades, there is a tremendous development in the field of science and technology. In earlier days, if we had to communicate, then it used to take lots of time. But now, it just requires a click on your phone. So what actually is the reason behind the advancement in the field of digital world which has created a digital revolution? And we can say that this advancement in technology itself is a reason for a mobile to become a smartphone or for a computer to become a supercomputer. And now we are in the era where human beings are having the robots and the answer for all these things resides in physics itself. So if we look at our day-to-day -day necessity which is the mobile then its performance, its features etc are because of this reason itself and clearly we know that the reasons are the semiconductors or the semiconductor devices. So till now we have dealt with the physical principles which were governing the behavior of the semiconductors like what actually are the semiconductors, the carrier concentration, the Fermi level, how it is going to depend on temperature, the transport properties, the optical properties etc. Now we are going to concentrate on the applications of these principles that is we are going to observe the transformation of the principles to the practical electronic devices. So if we look at then we can say that the successful development of these devices especially the transistor has stimulated a great interest in the semiconducting substances and also in case of material science. And this semiconductor research especially since early 1950s has enormously expanded our understanding of the basic structure of matter. So many digital consumer products in everyday life like the smartphones, digital cameras, washing machine, refrigerator, TVs or LED bulbs everywhere we can observe semiconductors and I can say that without semiconductors these advancements wouldn't have been happened. So we are going to concentrate our studies on the application part of semiconductors which is known for its use in digital world. And we observe most of the electronic devices which are around us are based on these semiconductors only. So for that we need to know some of the basics like what is a PN junction, then what are the different types of PN junctions and also the formation of PN junction. So why we are dealing with PN junction is that every semiconductor device has a PN junction. So what actually it is, what are the types and how it is formed is going to be the content of today's class. So already in detail we have discussed about semiconductor properties which you can get in the playlist section. So now let's move on to our topic which is regarding the PN junction. But before that we need to know what is the need of semiconductor devices. It may be a diode, transistor, integrated circuits or anything of such kind. When we are having already the metals or insulators, why there is a need or what is the reason of using a semiconductor instead of these two? So the reason is, first one, 
the smaller size and the lesser weight. So the semiconductors are smaller in size and have less weight. So miniaturization is going to be achieved and always miniaturization is helpful. That's why the computer which used to take a big room now can be held in our palm. Then second reason is semiconductor devices require low voltage power supply. It doesn't require large amount of power supply to work on. And then it requires a very small warm up time. That is it operates immediately as soon as the power is supplied. There is no requirement of waiting for the semiconductor to start working so that our device or instrument has to start working. So that problem is also not there. Then fourth mainly is the operating life. So the operating life of a semiconductor is longer when compared to that of the vacuum tubes and all. So we can say these four are the main reasons why we need a semiconductor or by these properties only we can say that semiconductors are going to help us in designing different types of devices like if we consider LED, gun diode, laser diode, photo diode, tunnel diode, zener diode or any of such kind everywhere we are having the semiconductors only. And these are the constituents of any electronic device. If you just open any electronic device, it may be a mobile or the motherboard, even the phone charger, then everywhere we can observe these PN junctions only. So now we need to know what actually is a PN junction. While studying semiconductors, we have studied different types of semiconductors, that is intrinsic semiconductor as well as extrinsic semiconductor. In extrinsic semiconductor we have studied n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductor. So extrinsic means they are not pure semiconductors or elemental semiconductors. Here the intrinsic semiconductor will be doped with certain impurities. So whenever the impurities are pentavalent they are going to create some excess electrons in the crystal structure which makes it negative that is n type semiconductor and when you consider a trivalent impurity then holes will be created due to which we can observe positive nature that is p type semiconductor so what actually is pn junction junction is something like the interface so we can say that a pn junction is a boundary or interface between two types of semiconductor materials, two types means that is P type and N type inside the single crystal of the semiconductor itself. And we know that P side contains excess of holes while the N side contains excess of electrons in the outer shells of the electrically neutral atoms there. So if we need to visualize then we can say this is the P N junction where one side is P type that is it is going to contain excess number of holes that is positive charges and one side it is acting as N type which contains excess of electrons. So in combination or the interface of these is going to form a P N junction and the P N junctions are the elementary building blocks of any semiconductor devices like diodes, transistors, solar cells, LEDs or ICs. ICs means integrated circuits and they are the active sites where the electronic action of the device is going to take place. And these are some of the basics which explains what actually is a PN junction. Now let us move on and understand what are the different types of PN junctions and we are going to study the types based on the variations of donor concentration and acceptor concentration across the junction and its neighborhood. And based on this there are two types of PN junctions. One is a graded junction and another one is an abrupt junction. So here we can say that graded means gradual, abrupt means sudden. So in graded junction 
the impurity concentration will vary gradually whereas in abrupt junction the impurities change discontinuously that is the change in impurity is not gradual suddenly concentration will change something like a binary system to understand this types of junction in detail let us consider a pn junction where one side in p region access number of holes will be there and in n region access number of electrons will be there let us say nd means donor concentration is present in n region because the impurities which are added to the intrinsic semiconductor when it is pentavalent it creates one extra electron so it is something like a donating so those impurities are called as donor impurities that's why n region will contain donors whereas p region will contain acceptors and if we consider graded junction then the concentration of acceptors is going to decrease gradually as it approaches the junction that is the interface and if we consider n side then the donor impurities are going to decrease gradually near to the junction so this is how the change in impurity concentration will take place across the junction and if we move on to the abrupt junction again considering the pn junction but here the concentration of the acceptors at the junction will suddenly drop and in n region similarly the donor concentration also drops so here we can observe there is no gradual change but sudden decrease is going to take place that is in p region the acceptor concentration is constant and at the junction na that is the acceptor concentration drops to zero and no acceptors are present in the n region in the same manner in n region nd that is the donor concentration is constant throughout the n region but at the interface it drops to zero and we can see that there are no donors in p region but when you consider the graded junction there is a certain probability of finding some acceptors in n region and donors in p region so this is the difference between the two but one thing we need to note is that one cannot manufacture a strictly abrupt junction because the impurities will tend to diffuse across the junction to some extent so we will be generally having the graded junctions itself but for simplifying our studies we will consider only the abrupt junction because we can then illustrate the physical phenomena without any extra mathematical complications which are not so essential as such every pn junction will be graded junction but for the simplicity we will consider abrupt junction for our calculations and now let us move on to the formation or preparation so as a junction means the region where p and n region are going to meet the whole junction is one single piece of crystal which is made of same material or same semiconductor in which the two sides are doped differently rather than two different pieces of semiconductor joining together so as such we can think that p n junction means we will consider one p type semiconductor and another will be n type semiconductor and we will just join it but as such that is not going to be helpful here what we will be doing we will consider one semiconductor and at different sides we can just add some dopants and form the junction and there are mainly three principal ways of preparing p n junctions first one is the grown junction method then the second method is alloying method and the third method is diffusion method in grown junction method the semiconductor junction on the crystal is grown like for example initially say n type crystal is formed 
on melting or such and then acceptor impurities can be added from one end so that the added portion becomes p type and already we had n type semiconductor so it is going to form a pn junction so this is how grown junction method is working then moving to the second that is in alloying method a semiconductor base crystal is taken and alloy pellets or foil is melted on it so this is going to give rise to pn junction and finally the diffusion method so in diffusion method an impurity element is diffused at certain temperature that is when n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor materials are first joined together and then due to this a large density gradient will be created across the pn junction and this will result in some carriers to diffuse from one section to another to finally become stable or come back to equilibrium so in detail about diffusion method we will deal in our next class and these are the three principal ways of preparing pn junction so this is for our today's class where we have discussed why we need actually the semiconductor devices then what actually the semiconductor device is made up of that is the pn junction what actually is pn junction then types of pn junction and also how pn junction is formed and in our next class we will be dealing about the diffusion method which eventually explains about the state of equilibrium and also we will deal with the contact potential or contact field and finally if you understood the concept and want to watch more physics related classes then subscribe to my channel and also share the knowledge with your friends till then stay tuned study well upgrade yourself and thank you for watching